NuGet packages, specifically how to create them. So NuGet packages, we all use them, basically just a way of getting functionality into our applications. We don't have to rewrite everything. Um, some of you may not know, but the majority of all the ASP.NET stuff are now in, in uh, NuGet packages. Same with Dameron, same with C Sharp console applications. And I believe with the newest version of WPF, that's the case as well. Um, going forward with things like .NET 5 and .NET 6, that's going to be increasingly the case where everything is, is largely just NuGet packages so that they're not having to include everything in the framework. So how to create them. Um, there are a couple of things you need to start with. One is going to be an idea of what it is you want to create. And then you just need to create a project that's going to have that particular code in it. I'm going to be using a project that I've been using that Nate hates, which is my promise package for C Sharp. Promise is a JavaScript and a few other languages feature. C Sharp has tasks, but tasks have some things I did not like about them. And so I decided to create this one. Um, so if you're going to create the project, you're going to add metadata to it. And I'm going to skip through the slides because it's easier just to see on the code. With the advanced features, we can target multiple frameworks, which I'll show you. That just gives you more visibility. By targeting multiple frameworks, you can have things that show like the .NET standard or the full .NET framework or even the new .NET 5. And you can have your package set for how they're going to work with each one of those different frameworks. You can also create symbols packages, which I'll also show, so that your users of your package can actually step through your code as it's running if they have the right setup. Okay, last steps, create an account, upload, and then upload the package and zip load symbols to package. So let's end that, and we'll jump into this project here. So this is a really simple project. It's got just the one, and then a test project to make sure that my stuff actually works properly. And then it's got, got a couple of files to actually host the code itself. And you can see there's a fair amount in here. Okay, so once you've got your code and you've got what you want to share, you're going to come into the properties for your project. And you can see right now the target framework for me is .NET Standard. I'm going to change that in a minute. But I can come over here to Package, and I can tell it that I want to generate a package on Build. You want to make sure that you're on the release setting for that because you don't want this thing to be generating packages every single time. So if I switch it to Debug, for example, why is that not showing up, I wonder? Um, I can make it so that it's not generating a package every time I just build a debug version of it. So inside here, I can put all the different metadata that my package needs. So I've called it Sharp Promise because I'm not creative with names. I'm currently on version 1.6.0, which is the fully compliant version. It's got everything that the JavaScript library has, and it is fully compatible with async and await. So this is the last version that I've got. Um, licensing, I'm actually going to add that now, okay? And I can just give it an expression, which I'm going to say just MIT, because this thing is hosted under the MIT license. If I want to give it a different license, I can pick a different expression, or I can upload a file itself, okay? My project URL, this is handy if anybody wants to actually go look at the source code and add a pull request or figure out why I did something. It's also handy in the symbols package, because then they can actually download the source code and step through it if they need to. We've also got an icon file if I want to be able to host some image for the package, which I don't have an image repository URL. I guess project would be like a home page if you had one. I don't, so it's just the repository. Any tags you want to add, in this case, that's going to be promise and task. I could add other things if I want, but that's it. And then we've got some assembly information down here, which is mostly just going to match the package versioning. Okay, so you can fill this information out, and if I now build, uh, let's see, let me pull up my folder structure. Okay, it will output a NuGet package like these. I'm going to quickly change my version number, and you can see it does update it down here, and save that. Now I'm going to build and just say that I'm building a new version because I added the MIT expression license. So we'll... I can build the solution. The test project doesn't matter, but I can build it just fine. 
Okay, and you can see now I have a version 1.6.1 of the NuGet package. So if that's all you're interested in doing, .NET Standard 2.0, which is what this is targeting, that will run just fine on pretty much anything you're going to need to use it for. .NET 5 is going to be compatible with it. Um, the .NET framework is largely compatible with, compatible with it. Um, it. It should work just fine. So from here, I want to be able to add multi-targeting support. And you'll notice this did not create a symbols package. It just created the NuGet package. So I want to add both of those things. So I'm going to come in here to my Solution Explorer, and I'm going to right click and edit my promise project file. OK, inside here, you're going to see most of the same stuff that was in that, that uh, GUI interface. So you can see I'm targeting that standard 2.0. You can see my description, tags, release notes, everything. Even a language version, which I'm using a slightly older version of the language. Um, and then the, the expression that I just gave it for the package. OK, to add a symbols package, we just need to add three lines, which I'm going to just copy and paste for brevity. Add them here. So this publish repository URL is going to allow it to publish that as part of the actual package. So the repository URL that I've got here, oh, this one, that will now be published with the package. And then this includes symbols is going to be what tells it to, in, to actually create the symbol package. And then the format is going to be this symbol NuGet package. I could use different formats here, but this is the one that NuGet likes the best. So I can save that. Sure, tabs over spaces always. So now if I build this, not run. Stop debugging. Yes, there's nothing to debug. Oh, it's running the test. Yeah, cool. All right, so build, build succeeded. And now you can see I have the NuGet package, but I also have this symbols package. So this is going to have all the different information that Visual Studio would need to be able to actually pull up code and say, hey, this threw an exception and it's not your fault. It's the idiot that made this promise library. Here are the symbols so you can actually get information about what went wrong inside there. Okay, so it's just a matter of adding those three pieces. And then this target framework, right now I'm only targeting one framework. So if I change this to target frameworks with an S, now I can tell it I want to target .NET, uh, .NET Standard 2.0, .NET Standard 2.1 if I really wanted to. .NET, uh, I think just .NET 5 should be fine. .NET 5, I could also do any of the .NET frameworks or I could do Net core, whoops, semicolon. Net core app. Is it net core app, Nate? Do you remember? 3.1. Anyway, that'll target.NET core instead of.NET standard. I don't need that because I'm not using any of the net core features. Um, but these three would allow me to target three different frameworks so that people can get different versions of this if they need to and apply it to different packages. So by saving this, um, got some things within telecode. It, Visual Studio does not like having done this. So if I try to come in here now, it's going to complain and say, hey, there are problems with this. I'm just going to tell it to close the solution and then reopen the solution. OK, and then all those errors go away. For whatever reason, Visual Studio just doesn't like having that target framework thing change while it's actually running it. So if I look in here now, you can see that the target framework is not something I can select anymore because I've told it that there are multiple frameworks. And those are all controlled by here. So I'm going to go ahead and build just this one this time. OK, and now nothing changed about this right here. But if you look up here, you can see now I've got different folders with the different build DLLs in each one of those frameworks. So it actually built a different version of this for each one of these frameworks, and then basically shoved all that information into a single NuGet package. Okay, so now this one NuGet package is going to have the information that it needs to be able to deploy those to whatever framework I have to be running, or happen to be running. So if somebody is using this on the .NET 5 framework, it'll pull out the .NET 5 
version of the DLL from this NuGet package and then upload that, or not upload, use that. So once you have those built, you're going to go to the nuget.org website. Okay, and then you're gonna sign in with the account that you created. And then you're going to come, well, you can just do it here to upload package. So either here or here. And then it's gonna ask for the different pieces. One thing I don't like about NuGet is that you can't upload both of these at the same time. You have to do just one then the other. But I can upload this and you can see it gets the minimum information out of it. You can see what dependencies it's got. So I, you can see now that it targets net standard two, 2.1 and five and then all the rest of my metadata information. I'm actually going to come in here because I believe I've got some documentation I want to copy over. Nope, not on this one. Probably something I should add. Um, so I won't worry about the documentation now. I'm gonna go ahead and submit this. And once you submit it, it'll go through a process to make sure that you're not uploading anything that's malicious. That's gonna be this validating phase. Once it's been validated, then it'll appear here listed. And then once that happens, you can actually download it as a package from the NuGet library. While that's happening though, I can come back up here to the upload page and take this symbols package, upload that. You can see it knows what it belongs to, submit. And then there's nothing new, like I can't do anything different with that. It just tells me that this package hasn't been uploaded published yet, and then the simplest package is also waiting. So this can take anywhere from a couple of minutes to a day, but uh, once that's done, then it'll appear as listed and you can download whatever version. So questions or comments, things you'd like to see or know more about? One hey. quick here. Okay, George. Surprised it doesn't let you publish right from Visual Studio. I've obviously never tried to do this, so I'm just surprised. Yeah, that would be a feature. Maybe they do, and I'm just not aware of it. I I believe you can upload it to the NuGet servers using the .NET tools. So using this tool, um, but I haven't looked into that, so I have no idea how to do that. Right click on your are... project and let's see what it says. Do what now? Right click on your project, let's see what it says. Cause I know there's like a pack, which we'll do. I just wonder if there's anything else. I mean, there's published, but that's different. I don't know what pack does. It just said build succeeded. I don't know, there's nothing new over here and the date times on these aren't updated. Yeah. So there might be some way to do it. I, I'm just fine logging in and dragging and dropping. It's not terribly hard. So you can manage NuGet packages from here and then we can see Here it is. Obviously, it hasn't got the 0.1 version yet because it hasn't been listed, but I could install it right now if I wanted to. However, I'm not a big fan of this kind of recursion. Other questions, comments? Okay, if there are no other questions or comments, then uh, turn it back over to Nate. Oh, goody. <laughs> All right, well, uh, thanks, Phil and Dan, for that. I appreciate it. All right, well, thanks, guys. Talk to you later. See ya. See you guys. Thank you.